Welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming. Thank you for tuning in to another Spicy Toast video and our Pike Guide for Path of Champions. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, and let's get into it. We're going to start off with an overview, just giving you the basics of the champion and whether or not this is a champion you want to invest your time and shards into. So first we have Lurk. Lurk is the keyword that the whole deck is built around. I will explain it more in game later, but essentially you are scaling up the power of all of your units throughout the entire game. So as the game goes on, you just get more and more powerful. Next we have Draw built into his kit. There are a lot of different ways that you're getting Draw uh, throughout the entire game, and it's very simple and just built into the game, built into his deck. There's really nothing you need to worry about. You're just going to get more cards, and so you have more freedom uh, to play what you want and not have to worry about running out of cards. Next we have Unit Focused. So you're not really focusing on your spells. You're more focusing on all of your Lurker units and getting them buffed up and scaling them throughout the entire game. Next we have Board Wipes. So Pike himself, once you get him leveled up, he is able to consistently wipe out the entire enemy board. Uh, it is quite fun and probably one of the most fun things to do in Path of Champions or just Legends of Unterra in general. Next we have Removal. So the few spells you do have are generally removal spells, taking care of enemy threats, and also with those board wipes, you just have absolutely massive amounts of ways to get rid of the entire enemy board, especially later on in the game. Lastly, we have Unique. Because of that lurk effect, no other decks really play um, anything like Pike. It is sort of a ramping, scaling deck, uh, but the way you achieve that feels very unique um, to this deck, especially from any other decks in Path of Champions. All right, let's go in-game, really dive into that Lurk keyword, explain how you can use it, as it is more intricate than most of the keywords, and then we'll talk about Pike's deck and his uh, star powers. What is Lurk and how can you achieve that? So Lurk is one of the more intricate keywords in uh, Legends of Runeterra. What it is, is that when I'm on the top of your deck, I lurk, granting lurker allies everywhere 1-1. One, one. Max once per round. So what happens is, when you attack, if you have a lurker unit on the top card in your deck, you will be able to get the lurk effect off, and then all of your lurker cards are going to go up in one power. Now, since it is the top card in your deck, and you normally don't have any way to tell what that is, it's not always consistent. But with Pike and other Lurk decks, you are able to try to um, work around that. So one way is Predict. Predict, you get to see three cards and choose one to be at the top of your deck. You can make sure that that card is a Lurk card. But for Pike, you normally are going to be using Bloodbait or um, Pike's Harpoon. So what this does, create a Snapjaw Swarm on the top of your deck. Snapjaw Swarm, right here, has that Lurk effect. So we can play this. That card is now on the top, so we are guaranteed to get our Lurk off. So we're going to attack with this unit. It happens to be a Lurk unit, but it doesn't um, have to be a Lurk unit in order to get the effect off. You just have to have the Lurk card on the top of your deck. So it will attack. There you see that is showing you that the Lurk effect was achieved. And as you see, this card went up by one power. So that is the um, Lurk effect. Basically, what you want to try to do is be able to get attack off every single round. You see here, we don't have the attack token, but this card, play, I start a free attack. So we can put another Blood Bait, another Swarm at the top of our deck. Now when we attack, when we don't have the attack token, we still get that effect off, and our cards are now um, up by one power again. So this is generally how you want to play the Lurk decks, trying to get that effect off every single round, and that way you'll you are able to achieve uh, that scaling you really need with those Lurk decks. 
When playing pike, there is one other aspect of lurk you need to be aware of. So you see we have pike here, and then there's pike spell. An ally strikes an enemy, then moves to the top of your deck. So what we're going to do is we are going to move this pike to the top of our deck so that he will be the unit that is currently lurking. So he has now moved to the top of our deck. And now watch this deck here. Look what happens when we lurk. So you get the same effect, but then you also get Pike's um, his face. And now instead of just drawing Pike, what's going to happen? We draw a death from below. So this is a fast speed spell. And if you use it, Pike will be summoned striking an enemy. So this is a great way to get Pike on board hitting an enemy and that is going to level up or help level up your pike and this can be really how you facilitate board wipes so you need to be paying attention here to see if his face has popped up you know you were able to successfully get lurk off with pike at the top of your deck and that when you draw him you're going to be drawing this spell the death from below and this is how pike transforms and it's really a key part of his kit and something you want to be aware of and utilizing to the best of your ability. All right, that's it for the in-game uh, portion of the Pike overview. Let's go back and finish talking about his champion, his deck, and his star powers. In-game now with Pike, you see we have him at level 20 and two stars. So he is a four cost champion. He has that quick attack and lurk. So he starts out as a 1-3, so very weak, but you are scaling him up throughout the entire game because of that lurk, or at least you're trying to. Um, he has that effect when I lurk, transform me into the death from below that we just touched on. So that's right here. It costs 4, so the same amount as Pike, but then it is that fast speed uh, lurk. So if this was at the top of your deck for some reason and not um, Pike himself, you'd still get that Lurk effect off. Some spells have that, it's very nice. And then yeah, you summon a Pike that is just striking a unit. When you summon him, if you have any other effects like Trifarian Might, uh, the power where a five plus power ally, when you summon them, they strike the weakest enemy. Or if you have any of these items, they will all also trigger. So it's Pike striking an enemy, but then since he's being summoned, all other summon effects also can uh, take place. Very powerful and something you want to utilize. So allied pikes have dealt 15 plus damage. So pikes everywhere, they're all working towards this same goal. So just having a pike that dies, so you block with him, you're able to get a good amount of damage, but he dies. Still perfectly fine. You just need your pikes to deal a lot of damage. So it's good to have extra copies of them. Uh, so that you have more and you can sacrifice some if you need to. When he levels up, he gets one more power and health. And now when I kill an enemy, I strike the weakest enemy. And this will keep scaling. So if he kills a unit and then strikes the weakest enemy, if he kills that enemy, then he'll move on to the next and the next. And he will just wipe out the entire board. So this is amazing if you can get him to a very high power then you can just use him to consistently wipe the entire enemy board. There's a lot of fun things you can do with that. Bone Skewer, this is his spell. So an ally strikes an enemy, then moves to the top of your deck. Create a pike in your deck since this is his champion spell. So this is very good for getting or guaranteeing that the top card in your deck is going to be a lurk card. Uh, so that's very strong. And then also you can use this to put pike on your deck, attack, and know you're going to transform him into this death from below. So a lot of different ways um, you can use pike. He is a fairly high skill cap um, champion, at least in my opinion. Let's take a look at these star powers. So uh, your one star power, game start, grant Mariner's Ruse, which is 1-1 one, one, and lurk, to two random allies when you get the attack token, Grant it to one more and draw one. So every time you get the attack token, you're granting this item to one more unit, and then you're drawing another card. So this is one of the ways you're just getting consistent draw without really having to think about it. And since this says when you get the attack token, 
Um, you can essentially cheese this by trying to get um, rallies off, using a scout attack, things like that that give you the attack token again. Uh, will give you more draw and it will help grant more units in your deck uh, this item. This item can stack up onto uh, multiple units so it's another way you're scaling up and it's a way to give your units that don't have lurk, um, lurk. Your two star plus one starting mana when an ally dies create a random lurker that costs one more in your deck and grant it one one. Um, this is actually pretty good. We were worried before that this would mess with your deck because you have um, units that have all of these items and then you're creating a random lurker that isn't going to have those items. Normally not the case or it normally doesn't feel too bad. The cards you're getting are either going to be your own lurker cards or they're going to be Rek'Sai, um, another lurk deck, their cards but they're still working towards that same lurk mechanic, and so they actually feel um, pretty good to have, and it doesn't feel like a downgrade getting those other lurker cards. Normally they have predict or things like that that are still helping you secure that lurk effect. So this, we were a little worried in the start, didn't know if this was gonna be kind of a downgrade to your deck, but it actually still works out quite well, and just make sure that you don't have to worry about your cards dying, or running out of cards, you can let them die and know you're gonna get more better versions essentially um, put back into your deck. Now his three star upgrades the Mariner's Ruse to go to four random allies, and then when you get the attack token, grant it to two more. The draw still stays at one though. This will just help you scale up and actually probably have a decent um, impact on how fast you're scaling. All right, if we go take a look at his starting deck, we have that blood bait we talked about earlier. Create a snap jaw on the top of your deck. This is a card that has lurk or spell. So if this is on the top of your deck, counts as a lurker. But you can use this before you attack to put a lurk card top of your deck so you're still getting that lurk effect off. You're trying to get that effect every single round. Like we talked about earlier, it can only happen once per round, so at least once you want to be attacking and you want to get that lurk effect off if possible. That's why things like this with a free attack are so important. You can use this on the turns you don't have the attack token to still get an attack off and try to get that lurk to get that scaling. All right, we have Sharkling. So decent one drop, lurk, overwhelm. Uh, you actually have a couple cards with overwhelms. So you don't really feel as necessary to get um, relics or powers that have it since you already have a good couple cards uh, built in So this card is fine Bone skewer. This is your champion spell ardent sensor grant the top ally in your deck 3-3 a Lot of fun things you can do with this The way it works is the bone skewer will go off first put the card you chose on the top of your deck And then the ardent sensor will go off buffing that ally by 3-3 so that is very nice to do. Um, you can use that to cheese with Pike. So you use Bone Skewer on Pike, you put him to the top of your deck, and then grant him 3-3, and then you can play him again next round, more powerful and trying to level him up faster. So this works out quite well together. Um, yeah, very good card. We have Redfin Hammersnout. Play grant an enemy vulnerable. Also got that Overwhelm. Uh, with all these cards, they are looking, you'd say, somewhat weak because um, they're not getting like items on them to make them more powerful. But these are all scaling up both with Lurk and with the item that's getting put on by, by your star powers, giving different cards in your deck that 1-1. One, one. Um, so even though they look weak, they actually will feel pretty good in-game. Um, but probably what you're going to be doing is looking to see what cards the item is meant been put on um, so you can know how powerful and what cards you might want to play some sometimes your sharkling is going to be stronger than your hammer snout and sometimes vice versa so we have the snapjaw swarm has that pickaxe so it at least has the two attack normally it starts out at zero um, so makes this feel much better to play 
Petty Officer, one of the few cards that does not have Lurk, but it's a 5-3, and then you can summon a Powder Keg or a 1-cost Follower. You're pretty much always going to be using the 1-cost Follower. Um, so yeah, this is a fine card, and you just hope one of the Mariner's Ruse gets put on it to give it Lurk. We have Pike himself. I'm just going to say the Under Titan. This feels pretty good once you get it down to that 4 cost. A little too expensive at 5 in my opinion. Another Lurk card, and then Attack. I have 8 plus, if I have 8 plus power, give me Fearsome, Overwhelm, and Spell Shield. So, you can give it um, 3 plus power either by buffing it manually with something like the Ardent Sensor from the Bone Skewer, or it just once you get to that 8 power from Lurk. Again, another card that has that Overwhelm. So you have three of your Lurker units that have it already. Uh, so that's pretty nice, um, just to have it being built in. Monster Harpoon. So this doesn't have Lurk. So that can sometimes mess with you, and there's not a way to give this Lurk. Um, often with Pike, you're trying to cut cards from your deck. Um, so this one, you might want to cut, but with that... Plunder, I cost 3 less, and the fact that it's built in Plunder, I cost 2 less. If you Plunder, this is a 1 cost, fast speed, deal 5 to a unit, which is pretty crazy. Um, so pretty good removal, but you might want to cut it so you don't get your um, Lurk effect, or so you can get your Lurk effect off more often. I normally don't, but I think some people would like to cut this. So that is his... Um, deck, we'll take a look at the items we don't yet have. So 21, you're going to get Bloodbait gets a Summoning Beacon. So you summon a random follower. Not bad. Uh, Petty Officer gets Skirmisher's Saber. So Challenger, also decent. Bloodbait gets Hand Sensor. So you're going to buff up your Snapjaw Swarm by 1-1. One, one. Pretty good. These Hand Sensors... Um, anything that's buffing the top of your deck is pretty good for Pike because you're trying to manually put cards in the top of your deck. Um, so, yeah, that's nice to have, and that's the last item. So, in general, after playing with his deck and his star powers, uh, he's feeling a lot better than what I thought in my first impressions. Very happy about that. It is still an RNG deck. If you have very bad luck and you're not getting that lurk effect off, especially in your first couple rounds, it is very rough. But luckily there are ways you can try to uh, mitigate that. And then by default, most of your deck is lurkers anyways. Um, so it doesn't happen too often, but sometimes you'll go a couple rounds without getting lurk off, and it feels really, really bad. <laughs> All right, on to relics. So any of the strike relics work pretty well on Pike. You are summoning him multiple times. Uh, he's one that you really don't just let them sit on the board quite often. You're putting them back on the top of your deck, or you're summoning extra copies of, of him. So having these relics where you're striking, um, very nice to have. You're getting more benefit than most champions, and you're trying to get him leveled up as soon as possible. Uh, you always want to have a Stalker's Blade on him. Um, so if you have multiple Gatebreakers, I'd still always throw in one Stalker's Blade so that he can strike an enemy and then clear the board if he's leveled up. So getting more damage on him, pretty good. He is one of the few people that you probably actually want to put the Warhammer on, or at least the Warhammer's not a bad idea. Uh, making him a bit stronger right at the start and leveling up faster is just so important. There is an argument for Corrupted Star Fragment. Uh, the one issue is if he gets recalled, he's going to lose all those stats. So you could do this. Um, the one issue is then you need to keep Pike on board um, the whole time. So it will limit how you're playing, but it would help you level up faster. So this could potentially work. Um, Crown Guard Inheritance, when I level up Rally, this could be decent. If you're playing him, you're leveling him up and wiping the board. You can then immediately rally and try to end the game. Uh, not too bad. Um, Gale Force around to end Recall Me. This probably would be um, okay, especially if you have multiple other relics. 
where you're going to be striking every round. Um, not as good as some other champions, but would probably still work. Guardian Zorb, since you're summoning him multiple times, it would maybe be decent. I would rather go with a more aggressive approach. Um, but it is something you could make work for Pike. Uh, Tempest Blade when I level up Rally. Again, if you're trying to go for a combo of ending the game as soon as you level up, then this would be decent for that, especially if you paired it with Crown Guard Inheritance. You probably don't want to go for a Berserker's Buckle. For one, you have Quick Attack, so you're hopefully not taking damage. And then two, often you're going to be getting um, recalled or put off the board, and so all these stats will just disappear um, or reset once he's off the board. Um, the Grand General's counter plan probably wouldn't go for this um, myself. It would make, though, a Bone Skewer every single round. So if you really wanted to uh, be resetting Pike, putting him on the top of your deck, and trying to get Death from Below consistently, um, could be an interesting playstyle you could probably make work. Um, but definitely not um, optimal, I would say. Allies have Overwhelm. You normally don't need this since you already have a good amount of Overwhelm built into your units. And then the Scourge's Stash, Plunder, I cost you less. You don't really want to get Pike out too early. Um, sometimes even at level 4, you don't necessarily want to play him right away uh, if he's too weak and you want him to scale up a bit more. So I wouldn't really go with the Scourge's Stash myself. For common items, I would probably go with Chameleon's Necklace, getting more Pikes in your deck. That way they're more likely to lurk and transform into that death from below. Very nice. Uh, Challenger, always good. And Starshild Staff, giving you a bit more um, sustain, can be quite nice. All right, that's it for the in-game portion. Let's go look at powers and support champions you might want to get with Pike. Powers. So... Let's start with Counterfeit Production, Round Start, Create a Fleeting Counterfeit Copies in Hand. Uh, this is great for putting more Pikes back into your deck, and then also, uh, with this game, with Pikes deck, often you have certain cards that are getting those Mariner's Ruse, that item that you are stacking up. Uh, often that will end up on one specific card, and so you might have one card that is much more powerful than most of your other cards, so being able to put more of those into your deck and so you're stacking the deck with your better and better cards. Uh, this actually works out pretty well for Pike. Trifarian Might, when you summon a 5 plus power ally, it strikes the weakest enemy. Uh, with your Lurk effect, pretty much all of your cards are going to hit this um, in that like mid game. So then every single card you're playing is essentially removing an enemy threat. Very strong, and it will help you level up your Pike faster if you're playing him once he hits that 5 plus power. Domination Round Start Rally. This is probably one of the best powers in the game for Pike, because for Pike, every time you get that attack token, your star power is triggering again. It's putting more of that item on random cards in your deck, and it's giving you one extra draw. So that, very important. But then it's also facilitating you attacking every round and trying to get that lurk effect off. So this is probably the best or one of the best powers in the game for Pike. Up next we have Quick Draw. Cards you draw cost one less this round. Uh, you do have that extra draw from your star powers every time you have the attack token. So you're drawing extra cards and so this is going to get more uses as those extra cards you're drawing. You're going to have cheaper and cheaper cards so you can play more units. This actually works pretty well. The best defense Allies have attack, grow my health to match my power. Very, very good for Lurk. Often your units are going to have a much higher um, attack pool than their health pool. So this is going to give you much more defensive units because the Lurk is just constantly building up their power. And then this is going to make their health match that. Very, very strong. Wild Inspiration, your created cards cost one less. Now you might not think this is too great for Pike initially, but his second star power, when a unit dies, it creates a Lurker card that costs one more. So you are actually creating a lot of cards in your deck. You might not 
notice it because often the cards it is creating um, are cards you already had. But now you're just gonna notice that a lot of your cards, especially the further the game goes on, are just costing um, less and less. This works quite well. And if you're using um, counterfeit copies to copy more cards and create them in your deck, this will have a double benefit as it's going to be even more created cards in your deck. So while it might not be great, you might not think it's great initially, it actually works pretty well for Pike. Last group of powers here, Dragon's Rage. When you summon an ally, granted Fury, it's a dragon. So Fury, when your um, unit kills another unit, it gets 1-1. One, one. So you're very unit focused. You're trying to stack up your cards. This is going to be um, very helpful for having your units get stronger and stronger. And then once Pike is leveled up, if he gets a board wipe off, all of those are going to buff his stats. So he's going to scale very, very strong um, with this. Enfeebling Strike, when you damage an enemy, you reduce its power by the damage dealt. This is very nice for stalling out the game. Um, quite often with Lurk, you're waiting more into that mid to late game where your units have started getting to absolutely crazy levels of power, but you do often need to stall out a little bit longer since your units are weaker in the beginning. Enfeebling Strike really helps um, facilitate that, just letting you hold off until you control the board. Raiding Party when you damage the enemy Nexus, grant the top ally in your deck 1-1. One, one. You have a lot of different ways to know what the top ally in your deck is or manually put a card there. So buffing them up uh, with that 1-1 one, one after a big attack, uh, very helpful and will just help you draw stronger and stronger units. So this actually works pretty well for Pike. Uh, there's two other powers I wanted to touch on briefly, but I didn't have a photo of. So one was Lie and Wait. All allies with three or less um, cost are Lurk. So this can be nice. Normally you don't really need it since all of your cards already are Lurk, um, other than spells, but Lie and Wait doesn't count for spells anyways. So it can be nice as kind of a safety net, essentially, just to make sure any support cards you picked up or whatnot um, will be lurkers if they cost three or less. But normally you don't need it, as you already have lurk on all your cards. Uh, the other one is Feral Presence. It's an epic power and round start. It creates a zero cost predict in hand. Um, it is epic, so you won't see it as often. But that can be pretty nice for Pike, as then you always know what the top card in your deck is going to be. So if it's a Lurker, great. If not, then you can try to manually change it. So that is um, another one I just wanted to briefly touch on that it can work pretty well if you see it in game. Uh, that's it for the powers though. Let's go take a look at Support Champions. Support Champions for Pike. As always, we don't just want to give you a list of support champions. We want you to know why you might want to choose um, certain champions. So first we have extra attacks. So you want to get that lurk effect off every single round. Um, so any extra attacks, even if it's a free attack, will be very nice. However, if it can give you the attack token, so a rally or a scout, that will be even better since Pike scales well with those with his star powers, giving you extra items and more draw so free attacks rallies and scout all very nice and something you want to look for also lurk so the only other lurk deck is um, from shirima the Rek'Sai cards but if you can get those extra lurk cards or if there's champions that just happen to have lurk on them so their item is the mariner's ruse very nice and something you might want to uh, grab. So for extra attacks we have Quinn. Quinn's units are Scout, so being able to get those multiple attacks off. Uh, I believe Quinn normally comes with a two cost um, Scout unit. Really nice to utilize those and try to get those extra card draw and extra items onto your units because of that um, attack token it's generating from Scout. And then we have Rek'Sai, the other Lurker deck works very well, you both synergize incredibly well because you're both Lurk decks. And so if you see Rek'Sai um, with a support champion, 
or if you just see any of those other lurk cards in like the shop, uh, they're normally pretty good to pick up. All right, that's it for the support champions and the pike guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching that video all the way to the end. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. We're putting out multiple videos every single day for Path of Champions content. So if that interests you, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and welcome to the channel. Have a great day.